What if I told you your phone could be tricked into connecting to a fake cell tower and you'd never know it? These silent spies called stingrays or IMSI catchers can track your movements, intercept your calls, and harvest your data all without your permission. Until now, detecting them required expensive gear or hacking your own phone. But what if you could detect this tracking with just a $20 device? Ray Hunter, the new open source tool from EFF, can help you with that. In this video, we'll break down how it works, why it matters, and how you can use it to safeguard your privacy. If you care about digital privacy, you're going to want to stick around to learn how to make one of these devices for yourself. For those that don't know, a cell site simulator, or CSS, are devices that can gather detailed information about your cellular phone without your knowledge or consent. The EFF states that CSS operate by conducting a general search of all cell phones within the device's radius. Law enforcement use CSS to pinpoint the location of phones, often with greater accuracy than other techniques such as cell site location information, CSLI, and without needing to involve the phone company at all. CSS can also log international mobile subscriber identifiers, IMSI numbers, unique to each SIM card or hardware serial numbers of all the mobile devices within a given area. Some CSS may have advanced features, allowing law enforcement to intercept communications in some circumstances. When you travel around with your cell phone in your pocket, they connect to things called base stations. Base stations are devices that provide you with cell service wherever you go. CSS tools currently work in two different ways. One, the passive IMSI catcher. These just listen. Like radio, they grab signals out of the air and decode them. They can identify your phone's unique ID, called IMSI, without sending out any signal. The next are active cell site simulators. These are the heavy hitters. They pretend to be real cell towers, but louder and stronger. Your phone, wanting the most powerful and legitimate signal to carry your conversation, connects to it automatically. Now the simulator can track you, intercept data, and force your phone to downgrade its connection to an older, less secure network. This has similarities to something called the evil twin attack used by hackers to get the victim's Wi-Fi asset to connect to their device instead of the intended legitimate device. Now, if you're someone that likes true crime documentaries like me, you might have heard about how law enforcement tracked someone's movements through their cell phone. This technology may have been something they used to track that suspect. And if what the EFF says above is accurate, this type of tracking can be extended to normal people without the need for a warrant to the cell phone company because law enforcement might own their own CSS technology. Now, the legalities of all this are beyond me, that's for sure. I'm not a lawyer. I'm not here giving legal advice. I'm just some random voice on the internet that's interested in talking about what's going on in cybersecurity. The concerning part of all this is you probably won't even know what's happening. Detecting the cell site simulator in real time is tough. Most apps like Snoop Snitch might not be reliable. Some researchers like those at the University of Washington and the EFF built advanced tools to try and map out where these fake towers show up. But for most of us, there's no clear notification of when they start intercepting and recording your data. What type of data does it collect? Well, the answer to that is, of course, the dreaded it depends statement. When your phone connects to one, it can expose your location and your IMSI. The information it can gather increases significantly if the simulator downgrades your connection to 2G networks, enabling interception of call metadata, unencrypted communications, and web browsing data. More sophisticated simulators can manipulate communications by altering messages, faking calls, redirecting text, and impersonating caller identities. For more information and details, please refer to a study done by the Gamma Group titled 3G GMS Tactical Interception and Target Location, referenced in the video information below. Okay, now let's get to the fun stuff. How can we set up Ray Hunter to see when CSS is in use around us? Well, we start by picking up this nifty little Orbic mobile hotspot in Amazon for around 20 bucks at the time of the making of this video. I got mine right here. Currently, they do not support an install process through Windows, so you have to use a Mac or Linux to do this install. I'll be using my Kali Linux box, so if that's what you have too, then this will be a good step-by-step -step process for you. Step one, go to GitHub, get the latest release. When I did this, I was on version 0.5.0. Here you choose the appropriate installation package for the OS you're going to be doing the install from. Here I download the package into my downloads folder on Kali.
Here are just uh, changing directories to get to my downloads directory. Your pass may vary, but probably not. It's probably the same. Uh, listen out what I have there. So I got the right information, unzip, and then Ray Hunter. Then we ls to see the directory. We see the into the directory. And then we see what's inside the directory. At this point, make sure your Orbic is connected to this device that you're doing the install from using a USB cable and power it on. Now we're going to run the installer. You know, it's installer, not install dot Orbic. So it's sudo dot forward slash installer Orbic. We can see it accessing the device and it's just going to run through the automated install process. Here the Orbic is going to reboot itself. It'll take a bit. I'll cut out this part so we don't have to wait through it. And that's it. When you see testing Ray Hunter done and it drops you back to your command prompt, it's installed. It's finished. Super easy. If you look at your device after the install, it'll look similar to this with the green bar up on top and everything else will look exactly the same. Now to really test it out, we're going to connect to the Wi-Fi point itself and open up the GUI. Go to Wi-Fi on your phone, look at the hotspots that are available around you, and you'll be able to see your Orbic Wi-Fi hotspot. Go ahead and connect to the Orbic using the Wi-Fi password it gives you inside the menu. Once you've connected to it, go to 192.168.1.1, port 8080, and you'll be able to see the Ray Hunter GUI that you see right here. I did it from the phone first because I thought it was fun, but here is a screenshot of me doing it from the laptop so you can get a better idea of what the GUI looks like. We're not going to go in depth through all the options and the configurations. Uh, you can figure that out for yourself. But here you can see the current recording and you can see past recordings and any warnings that might pop up telling you that uh, maybe your information has been redirected to a CSS. Ray Hunter also gives you the option to download those logs using PCAP so you can inspect them further if you want to. Uh, I'll tell you, I drove around my hometown for a while. I didn't pick up anything. I'm going to dedicate some further time to it, maybe driving out to a bigger city <laughs> and see if anything happens there. If I do get something, I will come back and make another video and we can go through the PCAP stuff and see what we can see, see what we find out. I don't know. Maybe someone else already has that information online. In the meantime, after you do the install, why don't you go out and see if you can find anything. Come back here and let us know because I'd be really interested to see what other people are finding with this tool. In the meantime, I'm going to put all the reference documentation below so you guys can go pour through all that if you have any issues. Everything we did today was for the Orbic being installed from Linux. There are other ways to install it from other operating systems. There are other Wi-Fi points you can use. This was just the one that I chose to use. You can choose to use uh, many others. But go ahead and give it a shot and let me know what you find out.